Yo, yo, so uh, before we get started with today's video, I want to mention a couple of things about the lack of videos this month, because as you can tell, I didn't post anything this month. Uh, so yeah, if you don't want to hear my rambling about what's going on, you just want to TLDR, uh, October was busy, it was not fun, <laughs> but um, I'm getting back into the swing of things right now, so yeah, but if you really don't want to want to hear you know the more specific details about it then you can click this timestamp right here to get right into the video and I hope you enjoy it but for those who are really curious uh first again I am sorry about the lack of uploads this month October was a very very busy as month I had a lot of midterms um, I was also trying to get some scholarships for the next school year so I can go on campus and shit. And I've been also trying to deal with some personal, uh, <laughs> sorry, some personal stuff, mainly trying to hang out with family more and also take better care of myself because I've been staying up until around four o'clock in the morning doing videos and homework and so on and so forth. So I've been trying to, you know, balance all of that. Now, at the time of the recording, I'm doing a whole lot better, kind of. <laughs> But um, in retrospect for the videos I wanted to do this month, I took way too much dip in my chip because a lot of these videos ended up changing drastically. Like my trauma center video that I was going to do ended up turning from a cure set introduces to a whole ass review that required me to change the way I did them because I was reviewing all of the games. And for Strange Journey, that was a surprise because the like the game in general is extremely fucking difficult and it took me a minute to be because I had to do a lot of grinding but um yeah around the time that this video drops I am hoping to have Redux at least finished because right now I'm halfway through the game took a little bit of a break so I could do this video and when it releases it might be after this video comes out or the week after this video comes out because I'm releasing this um, during Halloween and shit or the Halloween week so yada 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 um, in the future though I'm hoping to get these videos out a lot sooner without crunching and making the quality of the videos absolute dog water because I realized a couple of my videos I'll do that sometime so I want to get better with that but nonetheless I want to thank you guys so much for being patient with me during this hell of a month so but without further ado let's get into the video shall we since i was a kid i would always be playing video games and my love for the medium grew around the time i was around i think 10 or 11 i don't remember which but that was around the time when i discovered emulation and playing these older games and seeing how it all evolved into what we had now actually fascinated me and one of my biggest dreams was to own some of these games and just in general have a big ass video game collection and starting last year i ended up kickstarting my dream of owning the video game collection and to be honest i actually wanted to do this since middle school but i never really had the financial means to hell i even asked my parents for help when i was younger but um they did not want to help me with it because they never understood why I would want older games instead of newer games. And in terms of the newer games, yeah, uh, I had to sell it a couple times, especially if I wanted to get a particular console. So, it it sucked, I regret it, but here we are now uh, trying to rebuild everything. But for this video, we're going to be talking about all 47 games in my collection, as well as games I want to own in the future and my experience with getting them. Of course, we're going to talk about my retro collection, but I also want to talk about some of the newer games as well, because you know what? Why not? We'll also mention consoles too, but in more of a limited capacity, because most of these are consoles I had since I was a kid, and one particular console I ended up getting from my aunt. So let's start in the present and work our way back to the past. First starting with, sorry, the Switch. Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> Alright, so contrary to popular belief, out of all the consoles I own, I play my Switch the most. Next to my PC and PS2 and Xbox 2, I guess? Anyway, but instead of playing it at home, I often take it with me whenever I go on long trips. And you know what, despite all the problems that this console has, to be honest, it really isn't that half bad. As for the games I got, uh, I think it's tied with my PS1 collection, or maybe my PS2 collection for how big it is. 
And mainly my Switch collection, most of the games I got ended up getting it for our, either a Christmas present I got during the pandemic or I got for a discounted price. And that is the case with all my games and stuff because I often try to get the cheapest version possible or at least find the best deals and stuff. Because I don't, because unless it's a game that I really want, one and I'm cool with paying full price for I'll do it but oftentimes I'm just like let me get a discounted price so I can save money and get more games in the uh, future and stuff but I can tell you though the games I do got um, I really 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 enjoy but let's start with some of the more obvious games that almost every switch owner has in their collection nine times out of ten so we got Smash Brothers Mario Kart Splatoon 2 Breath of the Wild and good old Animal Crossing now, it took me a minute to get some of these for a variety of reasons. Like, I didn't care about Splatoon 2 at first, until I actually spent some time with it and actually enjoyed it. Though, I also ended up getting this a couple months before the Dirt game came out, so it was kind of fizzling out around that time. Now, I do want to get the Dirt game, but not for the gameplay. No, 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 no. It's for one reason and one reason only. Big Man. That's the only reason I'm buying it. We also got Mario Kart, which, you know, I don't have to say much about it because it's Mario Kart. You just gotta have it, you know? Next is Smash Brothers Ultimate, which was the third game I got on my Switch and was also the first Smash game I owned since Brawl all those years back. And Ultimate was a fun time whenever I went up against friends online and always pissing them off because I always played Kazuya. Now, I'm glad I ended up getting this as I always was a fan of Smash Bros. Not in the competitive sense so much, but more in the amount of mayhem that can be caused, especially with items on. And I would love to play this online with friends again, but I gotta renew my Switch membership. Though I'm still deciding if I want the regular or the expansion version, despite both low key kind of being booty to an extent. Now my most recent Switch game I got was Animal Crossing, which initially I never saw the hype for this franchise until I saw all those TikToks back during the pandemic. And uh, yeah, fast forward to today, I can definitely see the hype behind it now. And finally is Breath of the Wild, which many will say is overrated, which is true, but damn was this a nice change of pace from usual Zelda titles. Now, the rest of the games that I actually have on my Switch are... Okay, it's a mixture between new games and also remasters slash collections. And if we're gonna start with one of my new ones and stuff, let's start off with Astral Chain, which... Oh boy. But to make it short though, I love this game a lot. And they need to make a sequel to this, like, expeditiously. Then I have one of the more surprising finds being Travis Strikes Again. Was I found for like five dollars. Yes, you heard me correctly, five US dollars. The crazy part was that it wasn't even on sale or anything, so best believe I scooped this bad boy up quickly. And I have SMT5, which I'm looking forward to sharing my thoughts about it because it's a pretty cool game. Though I might need some help because, oh boy, I have feelings that I can't quite articulate. But beyond the new games, most of my games I actually have on here is actually more or less the collection slash remasters. So the first out of my collections and remasters is the Mega Man X Legacy Collection, which is, includes both 1 and 2. For some reason, only 2 is available digitally and the first one is available physically? I don't understand it, but I ended up getting this in order to play during the pandemic, especially to play Mega Man X and also experience some of the other games. In general, I'm a fan of the series as a whole and I wanted to support the franchise for a possible return. Though also, I'm gonna need Capcom to port the Legends games on modern platforms because I'm not trying to pay over $100 for the original. Jesus Christ! It was fun playing through the games despite the latter three not being as good. I love the first, fourth, and fifth game, and you know what, I wouldn't mind playing X7 and X8 again because they weren't that bad. But then again I will have to hear the infamous sound clip again from X7 and risk- BURN TO THE GROUND! BURN TO THE GROUND! So the next remaster I have is the Nocturne HD Remaster, which alongside Shin Megami Tensei V are some of the first Mega Ten games that I actually own in my collection. And I know what you're thinking, yes, 
I need to change that. <laughs> Finally, it's the first game I ended up getting for the Switch, the Final Fantasy X X2 Remaster, which gave me the chance to finally play these games. And I loved it so much that I've been in Final Fantasy X about like three to four times. And I don't do that often when it comes to games, especially JRPGs. It goes to show how much I love this game. Before we go into the next set of collections and stuff, um... Yeah, let's talk about the elephant in the room because this was a big stickler last year. Super Mario 3D All-Stars. And I already know what you guys are going to be thinking. Hero, why would you buy this? This is a clear cash grab. This port sucks ass. It doesn't even have Mario Galaxy 2. And you know why I hear all of that shit? But I'm going to be honest with you. This is kind of a good deal. <laughs> kind of. Mario 64, Sunshine galaxy all on one console that I could take with me anywhere? you damn right I'm getting this and I know it isn't that great but the opportunity to play these classes on the go is cool. Now what's not fun is the fact that this motherfucker is still in stores. The amount of times I've seen this in multiple stores like Walmart, Target, Best Buy, GameStop even is fucking insane and hell some of them were even at discounted prices so if i would have known that i would have just waited to get it so uh yeah i'm telling you guys fomo is a bitch and nintendo knows how to get our asses jesus christ okay let's just get on to the xbox collection hey that's pretty good so my xbox collection especially dealing with the xbox one is really small compared to my other collections and stuff and this is mainly because a lot of the xbox games that i have are digital so i can easily play with friends plus it was during the pandemic and then also this kind of prices were on there were pretty good too so yeah now one thing especially uh i'm still thinking about to this day is that if i never had sold my xbox 360 collection jesus christ that shit would be that probably would be the biggest collection that I have next to my Switch collection. I said I think that one would be the number one biggest because I had a lot of games for that fucking console because I played it a lot, including the Wii. So it's like both of them together would have been and shit. But yeah, but uh, let's start off with the first game that it's not the first game that I got, but the one game that I played the least, Mortal Kombat 11. I only got this for $10 and I have yet to play this because I'm not a big fan of it. I played Mortal Kombat when I was younger, but after playing other fighting games as I got older, I wasn't a fan of how the game felt. And if I wanted to play a fighting game nowadays, I would rather play something like King of Fighters or Tekken. Speaking of which, Tekken 7. Hey, you like what I did there? This bad boy was one of the first games I got on my Xbox One and Jesus, this game is so much fun. This is another series where I'm ordering a game from it for the first time, and Tekken 7 is a pretty comfortable game that's accessible to new and old players alike. The few times I played online were really fun, annoying sometimes though because of characters like Xiao Yu and Brian Fury, but still fun nonetheless. So next is Call of Duty Modern Warfare, and you see, despite my issues right now with Activision Blizzard and all of that bullshit that they're going through right now, this game, I fucking, oh my god, I fucking love. Modern Warfare was my first true jump back to the COD series back around 2019, and the last game that I played from the series was Black Ops 3, all the way back in 2015. That was the last COD game that I ever played. Initially, the game had me worried, since not only have the games been kind of meh up until that point, but they were also rebooting the original Modern Warfare trilogy and my first thought went directly to that this game finna be shit. But the more I saw of the game, the more I fell in love with it, especially after playing the open beta. Best believe afterwards I asked it for Christmas and since then I've still been playing this despite the new cards that are out. Which, uh, I'll save my opinions on those for later, wink wink. Of course, we also gotta talk about the banger that is the Resident Evil 2 remake, which is one of the best remakes I've ever played. Everything about it, from the way the gameplay actually plays with the tense nature of the environment, the feeling from the original remaining and being boosted with the new graphics, and Mr. X, a big bitch chasing you around everywhere and making you want to shit your pants whenever you heard his big ass footsteps. It is all great. 
Besides Mr. X, that motherfucker is scary. Now, what about Far Cry 6? This game is pretty cool. Far Cry 6 isn't the all-time best like Far Cry 3, but I still enjoy it as much as that game. The open world that Ubisoft is known for can be annoying, and trust me, it can be very annoying. But how Far Cry 6 handles it, it's alright, and it's fun conquering bases and seeing how to do it without going and guns blazing. Plus, one of the main reasons why I got this game was simply for Giancarlo Esposito. That man was to do the right thing, so trust me, I fuck with him. Uh, 100,000 parts of the way. Anyway, let's continue on. The final game in my Xbox collection is Cyberpunk 2077, which, contrary to popular belief, and for my last video, which you know you can go check in the card up here and stuff, I fucking love this game. But getting the game was interesting because not only did I get, you know, the regular copy, which actually came with a couple maps and stickers, this intro message, the disc, and also it has a reversible cover too, which was pretty cool and stuff. Another thing that I ended up getting was a steel book. Yeah, this is my first ever steel book that I've owned for a game, and it was pretty interesting overall. Uh, I was scared when I first got it, cause I was like, oh my god, did they send a steel book? Did they fuck me over? But nah, it was just, yeah, it came with it. It was dope. Um, and yeah, I'm actually, fun fact, hoping to eventually own this game on PC so I can play with mods. But yeah, I I really love this game. You should also watch Edge Runners. Great, great anime. Now, for the moment you've all been waiting for and probably actually came to the video for. The PlayStation 1 and 2. The console that doesn't need a single introduction and is the console that I practically grew up with. The games on here will all be games I have either played through updated ports on newer hardware or through emulation. And collecting these games has been a fucking journey, cause either they were, you know, relatively easy to find, or they were just random as hell, or of course there were some special ones in there and stuff. Um, there was, a, it, it, it was fun, but also very annoying as well. But um, yeah, let's just get right into it, and let's actually start off with one of the more weird finds. Crazy Taxi on the PS2. This isn't my first time with the game as I played it back on the Dreamcast collection on the 360, but I found out earlier this year that this game had a PS2 port. And yeah, I picked this shit up expeditiously alongside Metal Gear Solid. Now, speaking of which, I actually have all three of the Metal Gear Solid games, you know, starting from the PS1 and then going to, you know, the PS2 and stuff. And the weirdest thing was, was that a lot of these copies, mainly the Metal Gear Solid 1, was expensive for a complete in-box copy, and then MGS2 was also kind of loose. Like, for example, like, okay, you can see right now, I got this loose. Both discs are here and stuff, like, bada bing, bada boom and stuff. Then, Metal Gear Solid 3 is my only complete in-box one that has, you know, the original manual and disc and stuff. And, this is the one that also was kind of loose, but did come with a case. And it had a really ugly basic print to it, so I ended up printing it out myself. And if you plumb it on it... Don't think, don't think, don't think, don't think it yet. Now, I ended up picking up those games. Um, okay, everything besides Metal Gear Solid 2. So pretty much Metal Gear Solid 3, the Metal Gear Solid, and Crazy Taxi. I ended up getting it all from East Starland. Which, for those who don't know, is a store up in Northern Virginia, which... The store is big as hell, like there's a bunch of titles from the PS1, 2, 3, Saturn, I think they got a couple PC Engine games and the Neo Geo games as well. It's fucking insane, um, and it's one of my favorite places to shop at whenever I go up there and stuff. Um, I also got one other title, but you'll see that later on. Another game I got was Dynasty Warriors 3, which I got at a local book and vinyl shop. It felt random finding it there, but it was Dynasty Warriors, and I fuck with it. Plus, it was cheap, and I also got a My Hero poster from there. Then there's Kingdom Hearts 2, which is actually one of the few games that I've had in my collection for a while. I got it back in 2010 for my birthday, and this is actually the only retro game up until recently that my parents bought for me because I was obsessed with Kingdom Hearts when I was younger. I still am to this day, but man, I, I love this series so much. I was watching all the like weird YouTube videos from it and shit, um, the Kingdom Hearts tracks and shit. And yeah, I wanted to get this for myself, especially so you know, I have a PS2. 
I can play this, right? And yeah, I've been in this so many times too, and it originally was complete inbox, but I since lost the manual, which I don't know where it is, so eh. I might just buy one off eBay or some shit. In the future, I want to own Kingdom Hearts 1, Rechain of Memories, and the final mixed versions of Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2, which are surprisingly cheap. Which makes sense though, because it's damn near on every platform now. These new kids have it lucky. So, one of the other JRPGs that I got alongside a special little one is Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne. And I think this is actually a reprinted version. Because even though it's complete inbox, it doesn't have the extra CD and stuff. And the manual itself is black and white. You probably can't see it, but yeah, it's black and white. Um, nonetheless, though, this was one that I ended up getting on my birthday. So I could prepare for the Nocturne video. Because I was going to originally just play this version and call it a day. But my PS2 fucking broke. Nothing too serious. It was mainly the disk drive. <laughs> Sorry, but yeah, it was the disk drive that, god damn it, okay, it was the disk drive that I have an issue with because the laser was fucking up and I had to get it repaired. That was a whole dang in and of itself. It took months. It wasn't until around September that I actually got it fixed. Just, you know, it was August that I got it fixed. Um, so yeah, that was fun and... and the funny thing is, dude, this also got resurfaced so many times. Because the disc kept on getting fucked up from the ribbon cable just rubbing against it and stuff. I got it fixed three times, and I'm still surprised I'm able to play it to this day, so. Yeah. So, then there's these three games. Actually, hold up. I got four and five games that I got at Second and Charles, which is kind of like a... It's a weird store, but I got these during the time when my... Or actually, I got these three... Um, during the time my PS2 needed to get fixed, and these two were actually recent, um, or fairly recent for the most part. This store is where I got a bulk of my PS2 games, and one PS1 game ranging from Devil May Cry 2, Final Fantasy X and X2, and Tekken 3 and 4, all ranging from about $6 to $20. The most expensive out of them all was actually Tekken 3, which I expected it to be more expensive for some reason. Also, if you're curious if I'm doing a playthrough on the original Final Fantasy X, yes, yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Sir. yes sir, yes sir, yes sir, yes sir, that just leads to PS1 games, and let's rant real quick. My collecting started with Final Fantasy Origins, and since then one of my goals was to get all the Final Fantasy games on PS1, first starting with the mainline games. I managed to achieve this, but as you can see, I only have one game that's complete in box. So what about the others? Yeah. Though so I ended up getting Final Fantasy IX and VII mainly in a relatively budgeted price. Like this one, this one was $17.49 and this one was $29.99. And for the reason why they're loose, there's two reasons behind it mainly because one, I couldn't find a complete version of it, or the complete version was expensive. Yeah. And I'm glad I got 7 for a decent price because for some bizarre reason at my local game store, a complete version of 7 was either around, I think, $60 to $80 was my first thought was. Why the fuck is this game so damn expensive? And because of that fucking fiasco, um, I ended up getting Final Fantasy 7 more as a loose copy rather than, of course, complete. And Final Fantasy 9, as I mentioned before, I could have gotten it actually complete, but I couldn't find it at the store at the time. Plus, I'm actually debating whether or not I want to sell those copies and try to get a complete version of them because I've been able to find them at a decent price on eBay. Which, you may be thinking to yourself, why the fuck have you done for the first part? And... Let me explain that shit. Up until recently, I've never bought a retro game online for various reasons. I've heard horror stories about people getting scammed and or getting their games destroyed during shipping. And when I heard those stories, I was scared shitless. And of course, yes, these don't happen often, but I'm an anxious person when it comes to these things. Other than my Final Fantasy games, I also ended up getting another weird game, the Atari Anniversary Edition Redux. Which, I'm not even gonna hold you, I got this at an antique store for five fucking dollars, um, alongside a Stevie Wonder vinyl. Which, fun fact, um, I got this because I, I only got this for one song, but this is still a pretty good fucking album. 
So, the other PS1 games that I got are actually loose, but are all games that I ended up having since I was a little kid, and also some of it are also my dad games too, so let's go over that. We got Ready to Rumble Boxing, which I kind of remember playing with my dad, but only a little bit. All I remember about it is that the controls are weird as hell, and that's about it. Let's see what else we got. Uh, NFL Game Day 2005, which is a basic football game. A Bug's Life, which I remember playing a lot as a kid, and I still play to this day, and it's also very, very weird. But the grand jewel of them all is Dragon Ball GT Final Bout. Is what I would say if I was still five, but yeah, this game aged like shit, but I still love it. Uh, I also thought about selling this at one point, but I decided not to because this shit is my baby and I will fucking keep this to the day I die and stuff. But I also got a, another weird PS1 game. Actually, but this one wasn't so weird because of how cool it was, and that was a demo disc, actually. Um, I actually got this at a high school book fair. And yes, before you say anything, it genuinely was a very weird find, and I'll talk about it in a minute. But, um, yeah, it was pretty cool. But the disc was pretty cool, and I got to experience some cool games like Brave and some Masashi. But this is gonna be a minute before I own it, cause fuck! Alright, uh, let's see what's next. Uh, oh, right, my 64 Oh, wait a minute. Okay, so, slight correction. Uh, my N64 collection is shorter than my Xbox collection. Weird, I know, um, but Nintendo tax and shit. Uh, but the games that I do have are still bangers for the most part. And I ended up getting my N64 from my aunt uh, before I ended up moving to Florida. But during the time, she basically it only came with one game. It came with the cores and stuff, but no controller at all. Yeah, but after moving and going to my new school, I ended up getting some games and a controller for my classmate after I told them that I got an N64, which was pretty cool. The first game I ended up getting was Star Fox 64, which I played the moment I got home and enjoyed every aspect of it. It also showed me that the N64 controller is really weird to handle. So like, do you hold it like a normal controller or do you hold the dick? And yes, I call it the dick. Which one is it? There was also Pokemon Snap, which was small but adorable as hell to play through. And finally was Star Wars Racers, which I barely played and traded in for a sense of liberty. Then there's this wrestling game. The only game that was in the N64 I got, and um... I'm not gonna hold you, I barely played this at all. Now, before we get into the most valuable games in my collection, uh, we need to talk about something real quick. So, as you can see back there, uh, I have a Wii. The problem is, I have no Wii games. So how the hell do I play my Wii despite not being able to play any of the games and stuff? Well, it comes with this bad boy, and also this bad boy. This one's for my Wii, and this one's for my PS2, because I modded them bitches. I won't go into the process of how I modded everything, but man, the experience was the worst on the Wii. But it was worth it as I can play all the Wii, PS2, PS1, and GameCube games I want. This is how I've gotten footage for certain games and it's a way for me to play games that I won't be able to own because the price for these are the literal price of a fucking organ. And yes, I'm looking at you Revelations Persona and Eternal Punishment, but to be honest, it has been the GOAT when trying to play some of the classics I had as a kid like Sonic Riders. Though in every collection, there is bound to be some valuable games. Maybe not one, maybe not two, maybe even three, but nonetheless, there has to be some valuable games. Now, before we start though, uh, I need to find a transition real quick, so give me a second. And what about this? Eh, it works. All right, for this first game, we're gonna need some context. So, um, back in my old high school, before you know, I moved to Florida and stuff, they did this weird little thing every fall, which was sort of like a book fair. But instead of it actually being a book fair where, you know, there's just nothing but like, you know, the scholastic books and all that other shit, they, it was more like a bazaar for some reason. Like, I don't know why it was the case, but it was just like that and stuff. Um, they were, of course, were selling books. They were also selling like movies, music CDs. I'm pretty sure they're selling clothes at the motherfucker at one point. 
And they also had video games too, that was only like a small handful. It was ranging from like, I think, what was it? Like Xbox, Xbox 360 games. A lot of it too, I think it was like Dance Dance Revolution. So <laughs> it was really weird. Now, the previous year I ended up getting the PS1 demo disc, which wasn't really a lot. I think it was like about $10 and stuff. But that year, the year that I went, um, I ended up finding a really surprising game, right? It was like a PS2 game. I didn't think anything of it. It looked really cool. And of course, <laughs> sorry, I spent all of my lunch money on this shit. Yes, all of my lunch money. I basically didn't eat that day. Uh, but the game I ended up getting was Dot Hack Mutation. Also, okay, now you can see it. Sorry, light's too bright. But um, fun fact though, this game, almost got it stolen from me because someone from my marching band was trying to buy it off me i said no and i'm pretty sure they were going to steal this shit uh yeah i didn't understand it back then but now i do because this and the other games are expensive like the first game isn't that bad it's around 20 dollars complete in box and for dot hack mutation it's upwards to 60 Maybe more if you want the extra disc inside. Then there's the last two games with Jesus Christ. If you can find them individually, they can go between either 70 and upwards to $400. Yeah, it is expensive, so I'm glad I got at least a second game. But wait, it gets even crazier on the N64. It's over here, God damn it. So, one of the major highlights of last year that wasn't getting a PC or fucking catching COVID, which was... A whole day entirely um but around november december time frame i ended up going to an antique store where i ended up finding two games now the first game was golden eye 007 which in and of itself isn't a crazy game and stuff yeah it's not that expensive but what i found next was the craziest shit ever especially after learning just how expensive this damn game is paper mario yeah. For those who are unaware, both the original Paper Mario and Paper Mario Thousand Year Door are some of the most expensive games to get, especially if you want them complete in box. As of right now, these two are over $70 just for the loose version, and between $100 to upwards to $300 for a complete copy. Now, I just wanted to paint that picture for you guys, right? Because when I ended up getting this game, and, and even also getting Golden Eye 007, this right here was only $32. You heard me right, 32 US dollars. So yeah, at the time um, of this video, one of my most surprising finds, and actually some of the more expensive games in my collection, is Dot Hack Mutation and Paper Mario. And especially at the price that I found these games, they were fucking insane, and I didn't go into it earlier, but for Dot Hack Mutation, or I don't think I did, I don't remember. Anyway, I got this game for $15. Yeah, now it's like 60 This was 15 when I first bought it. But there is actually one more game we actually have to talk about. This final game is what made me excited to actually do this collection video, and it came at the perfect time. Introducing Police Knots. Hideo Kojima game. Despite this game not really costing much, because in total it was around $39.95, I still fucking got this shit. And plus, this game actually came from the same store that I got Crazy Taxi, Metal Gear Solid 3, and the first Metal Gear Solid, E Starland, because not only do they sell, you know, regular retro games and also new games too, but they also sold imported games as well. So, of course, everything from the PS1, PS2, and especially the Sega Saturn you can get it from there at a pretty decent price. And if you're wondering how I was able to play Police Nuts on my American PS2, mind you, modding, yeah, uh, there was actually a mod that allows you to change the reason of the PS2. As scary as it was, it was also pretty fucking easy. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much my whole entire game collection as of right now, because this is definitely going to change in the next few months. <laughs> the experience of collecting games has been so much fun, but also a little annoying with the way the market has skyrocketed the price for these games. Like I want to own Silent Hill and the early Persona games, but I don't want to pay the price of a black market organ for it. 
And you know what? I'm going to be honest about something. Despite my love for going inside retro game stores, checking out everything that they have, talking to some of the you know, store people about the games and so on and so forth, some of y'all be charging high as fuck prices for these games. And especially like if you go online, the most infamous of them all is DK Oldies. I know you're <laughs> like I know you got a business to run and all, but some of these prices are way too fucking insane. It's not all of you guys, it is a handful of you guys though. Currently though, my plans for my collection is to get Devil May Cry 1 and 3 to add, and I'm going to attempt emphasis on attempt to collect Persona 3 and Persona 4 on PS2 and the digital Devil Socket games all complete in box. Again, this is going to be the biggest attempt I ever do. Hell, in the future I might even go and get an imported copy of the SMT PS1 games and Persona as well, mainly Persona 1 and Persona 2 and Ascent. And if there's any other game that you guys think I should go and you know add into my collection, make sure you put it down in the comments below because I'm pretty sure there's a lot that I'm either not aware of or I need or I'm honestly forgetting. So with that, thank you guys so much for watching until the end of the video. So uh, a couple things, I again want to apologize for delay of the Strange Journey video, as well as also my stumbling for this video. I honestly was doing a, doing little edits of this and I'm kind of just winging it right now. My throat hurts and uh, all of that good shit. So again, thank you guys so much for being patient with me during this weird ass time. But next time I see you guys, we'll be finally going back to SMT with Strange Journey and Strange Journey Redux, which took me a very long time to do. And uh, I hope you guys will be patient with me on this one. Yeah, like always, make sure to like, comment, subscribe if you guys enjoyed the video. Also hit the little ring, the ring the bell, the bell notification so you know you guys can be notified when videos are coming out. And make sure to stay safe, wear a mask if shit's getting crazy out there, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace!